Welcome to Daily Tanya. Today is Thursday, the 10th day of Tammuz. Today we begin chapter 3 in Yegeres Atshuva, the third part of Tanya, a letter about repentance. Let's begin with Tzedakah again. Tzedakah, Tzedakah, Shemekareves, Tzedakah, Tzedakah brings Mashiach closer. So, the Alter Rebbe continues the conversation that we spoke in the last chapter regarding the meaning of repentance and where the place that fasting has in repentance. And in chapter one, the Alter Rebbe explained that repentance is just turning to Hashem and saying, I'm never going to go and rebel against God. It's a turn around. Turn and make a U-turn and say, I'm going to do what Hashem wants, and instantly a person is just like that, becomes a tzaddik, righteous in God's eyes, clean. Which, by the way, the al Rebbe in this case is more strict than the Maimonides, for example. Maimonides says, repentance is when you make a decision not to violate this particular thing that you did. But the Alter Rebbe says here, repentance is about completely turning to Hashem, making a decision not to go against the king in any in any area. And of course, obviously, when we're talking about people who are in the beginning of their way, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you can change overnight. It is... Um, you take everything at once, you may drop it at once as well. As the Rebbe once mentioned to someone, he told him, tafasta meruba lo tafasta. If you grab a lot, you, gra- you grab nothing. So step by step. But the turning around means that in your mind, in your heart, you've made a decision, that's it. I'm going to go on the right way, the way Hashem wants me to go. Practically, can it take time? Yes. But in a way, the al says that fasting is not part of repentance in itself. But then in chapter 2, the al added that there is room for fasting back in the days. They would fast, not as part of repentance, but in order to give a gift to God, so to speak, a present, a gift, something to appease and to become more, uh, once again, beloved, because just like when you offend someone, you offend a friend, you offend the king, and you ask forgiveness, and the king forgives you, everything is fine, he says, okay, but to come and show your face again, and to become friend again, you bring a nice gift to the king. Back in the times of the temple, you would bring an offering. And now that we don't have a temple, our sages said that there is Kabbalistically, each type of violation has a certain amount of offerings of, again, in the time that we don't have the temple, instead of the offerings, we replace it with fast, fasting. And there is certain amounts of fast days that is required, according to Kabbalah, for different types of sins. And we brought an example, what uh, Arizal says, Rabbi Yitzchak Luria, the famous Kabbalist, what he said, that if a person gets angry, for example, he needs to fast 151 days. If a person drinks wine, which is not uh, 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 good wine, which is yain, stam yain, which is from a goy, he has to fast. He said, 73 days. And again, we're not talking about actual fasting today. We're going to learn later. But but in idea, this is, this is what our sages have explained, that this is what is necessary. And now the Alter Rebbe goes on to say, what happens if you committed the same sin more than once, 
do you have to fast? For example, if a person got angry twice, does he have to fast two times 151 days? You can imagine we might as well stop eating for the rest of our life or maybe stop getting angry. It's not, not worth it. So Galta Rebbe brings three opinions. And this is one opinion is that yes, indeed, every time you commit a sin, you have to fast the same number of amount of days. Other opinion says no. You have to, even if you commit it one t- uh, many times, you only fast once. And the, basically, they say they differ uh, to as what type of sacrifice this is compared to. Because in the time of the temple, when we brought the offering, sacrifice offerings, there was what is called the sin offering. Korban Chatat, such an offering was brought. And, and every time a person violated, for example, if a person violated Shabbat, Shabbat is many different types of violations. For each violation, it needs to bring an, an offering. And if a person repeated their violation, it needs to bring twice. And so the same thing, those sages say, yes, and each time you commit a sin, you have to fast just as many fast days that is connected to that sin. And the others say no, that it's compared to the offering, which is called the Ola offering. Um, the Ola, the burnt offering, that was brought for violating positive mitzvahs, basically. But you only have to bring one. Even if a person did many, many times, brings only one offering, so they say also. It's one offering you bring. And the Rebbe comes and goes in the middle road, and he says basically that there is a compromise, sort of, and he will give an explanation why. He said that when a person violated once, he should fast one time. If he did it twice, he should be two times. But then if you did it three or more, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how many times more, you do it only three times. Three times fasting. So for anger, three times 151, go make the math. So, and, and the same thing with every sin. So let's see inside what Alter Rebbe says. Is Alter Rebbe the Hine? Chachme Yamusur, Achreinim Nechleku Bemisha Chata. The latter Musa sages, those who lived after the Arizal, they were divided in their opinions about one who repeated a sin many times. What should he do? Some contend that he must fast the number of fasts appropriate to that sin according to the number of transgressions. You did it once, you do it once, 151 days. You did it twice, you do it twice, and so on. And that Rebbe brings an example, example of, of the sin of, 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 uh, of the emission of simin. In the Tikkun Teshuvah of the Arizal, it prescribes 84 fast days. For example, the number of fast prescribed in, in, the pen, in the penances of the Arizal, when the Arizal writes about doing Teshuvah, he writes for wasteful emission of semen, is 84 days, 84 fast days. By the way, you say when you eat from a meal of a pidi on a ben, the redemption of her firstborn, which is a very rare mitzvah, it is like fasting 84 days, which I'm sure is much easier than fasting 84 days. What if someone commits this sin 10 or 20 times? 
צריך לנסוע עשר עשרים פעם עם פ"ד, וכן לא היינו. He must fast 10 or 20 times, 84, fast, and so on in all instances. And they say, why is it so? Because they say, these opinions, they say, this is, I believe, this, uh, the Shiloh HaKadosh says that, that it is the reason why you fast that many days, because it is compared to a chatas offering, a sin offering that you bring every time a person commits a sin. This is comparable to the chatas offering. And as the Rebbe says, all the chatat offerings that requires for every instance of violation. Other compare the, these fasts to the Ola offering, the Ola offering that is brought for neglect of a positive command. And in that case, you bring only one, even if you did it many times. The violation of a number of positive commands is atoned for, and the individual finds favor in God's eyes by one Ola. As the Talmud explains in Tractate Zivach in chapter 1. And that Rebbe concludes, it says, the accepted, what is the accepted decision? Is to fast three times. The accepted decision is in, in this dispute is to undertake three times the number of fasts prescribed for that particular sin. The Hainu. Meaning, 252 fast, which is 3 times 84, for wasteful emission of uh, uh, semen, and similarly for all other sins of the repeated. When a person repeats a sin, whatever is prescribed for that particular sin, you should do it, if you repeated it more than 3 times, you should do it 3 times the fasting. Now, the Rebbe explains why three times. So, the Rebbe brings an explanation of what it says in the Zohar. That when a person commits a sin once, it causes a blemish, a stain in the soul. When he repeats the, st- the, re- the sin, the stain extends, starts to spread. And a third time committing the sin, the stain becomes thoroughly, it, 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 it stains, the stain goes through and through, like from one end to the other. And therefore, so three times it's already completely stained, and therefore with the correcting of the sin, so when you fast three times, the amount is completely removing the stain that was done. That's what Alter Rebbe says. This is based on the teaching in the Zoya at the end of Parshas Noyach. As soon as a mortal man sins once against the Holy One, blessed be He, He makes an impression, meaning above and an a stain on the soul. Makes an impression about should a, should he sin a second time? The impact of his sin is even greater. Zimnat lisa is pashit aukisma misitra dola sitra dochulu. The third time he commits the sin, the stain penetrates from one side through the other. Lakach tzorich misper tzim is gamkin. Therefore, the number of fasts would also be three in order to remove the stain completely. 
There's an interesting, uh, deeper explanation that the Rebbe brings regarding this concept of repeating the sin, repeating the fast three times and so on. And the Rebbe says that when a person commits a sin, there is two things that is happening. Number one, he went against the king. You can no longer say that you're you're connected to the king. When you disobey the king, it doesn't matter if you do it once, you do it twice, three times, even if it's one time. One time you're disobeying the king, you already went against the king. But then there is also the impact on each particular each particular mitzvah has an effect on a particular organ. And he says, just like uh, the Tzemach Tzedek brings regarding the love that we have, the love for a fellow Jew, we love each other, it is because we are all really like one body with different organs. It's just like if, if your right hand would cut your left hand, you're not going to punish the right hand by cutting the right hand take revenge because we're all one body and whatever we do it has an effect we're all bodies and one one when you hurt one organ one part of the, of the body it affects the rest of the body as well so therefore when you when a person when a person commits a sin so the number one has the impact and the main impact on the person between the person and God. Then there is the impact on the particular part of the person that is affected. Every organ is being affected. Every mitzvah affects a particular organ. And then there is also the way the organ has an impact on the other organs. Sometimes you go to acupuncture, you tell him that your back hurts, and he's going to play something in your toe, and it's going to affect the back. Because all the organs there are intertwined and interconnected. So the same thing is also in the mitzvahs. Every mitzvah, that is committed that has an effect on the rest of the mitzvahs. Every mitzvah has an effect on the rest of the organs, including also every Jew that does a mitzvah has an impact on himself and on the other people as well and on the world at large. Therefore, it says that Adam, this is the difference between the opinions. That one opinion that says that you have to fast. One time, doesn't matter how many times you committed this sin. This is talking about that connection, the very, the, the, the origin, the, the, the essential connection that a person has with God, which is severed as soon as he goes against the shell. So that doesn't matter how many times he does that. And therefore, if he fasts one time, it fixes it. But then there's the other opinion that says that this is has an impact on all the other organs that are intertwined. That the other organs are included in this organ as well. When is that done? As the Zohar says, when the sin is repeated three times, then it becomes penetrated thoroughly and therefore has an impact on all the other organs that are included in this organ. That is the opinion that says that you have to fast three times. Because three times basically has an effect on all the other organs that are, that, that are included in this organ, which this mitzvah is connected with. And there's the third opinion that you have to fast each time this is because there is a certain effect, a cumulative effect every time 
that you do the 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 kamida sin that impacts other mitzvahs, other organs. Not this particular organ, because you didn't commit with that organ, but it has an accumulative effect on the other organs as well. That's why they say you have to fast each time in order to fix everything. But the bottom line is, bottom line is, as the Altrebbe says three times, is the accepted rule, which affects everything. But as we're going to learn tomorrow, starting to learn, we'll start to learn that the mitzvahs, this concept of fasting, is only in the days when people were able to fast and it didn't affect their health, and they were able to continue to serve Hashem properly, they would fast. Today, the Altarana says, we'll learn tomorrow, this is something that is being replaced with giving tzedakah. And also, what is important to understand that what is fasting? Fasting is giving up your energy, giving up your blood, your fat, your jo- enjoyment, your pleasures. So there's other ways also to give up enjoyment and pleasures for the sake of doing the right thing and helping other people, being nice to others and doing the right thing what Hashem wants. This then, this today, she will continue tomorrow. Hashem, have a wonderful day.